Hey guys, Catherine here from Enchanted Imitations. Today we are going to be learning how to make a no-sew fleece baby blanket. And I know these are really popular, but I've got some cool um, kind of different ways to do the edges rather than just the normal ties. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I have one actually finished here already. And as you can see, it's the, it's I guess what I would call the weave method um, where I cut holes in and I actually weaved the the tassels in and through each other. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and I'm also going to show you how to do the braided method. So sit tight and we'll get started now. Thanks. All right, here we go. We're gonna start with materials. The first thing that you're gonna need, of course, is two pieces of fleece fabric. Now the, the fabric can be the same for the front or back or you can use two different styles of fabric. So I actually have the, the blanket that we're going to be working on started. It's just another of the same fabric as the one I finished already. So the first piece of fabric I got has these super cute butterflies. I actually got it um, on clearance at Meyer. So I am making this blanket for a lot less than I probably will end up charging for it, which is really cool. Um, when you're selling things, it's always a good idea to look for stuff on clearance. Um, but the other piece of fabric that I got is just this purple piece on the back here. Um, you can see I actually picked this up at Joanne Fabric, uh, just a plain purple fleece, fleece um, piece of fabric. So you'll need fabric, scissors. I recommend using um, little sewing pins like this to hold the two pieces of fabric together when you're working with them so that they stay lined up. Uh, you're going to want to use a tape measure or even a ruler would work. And then the last thing that I use, and I guess that you don't have to, but I find it easiest, is either painter's tape or masking tape. So that's all you need for materials. Super easy. So once you have all your materials together, the next thing that you're going to want to do is to cut your two pieces of fabric to the same size. And the way that I find that's the easiest to do this is to um, lay the two pieces of fabric onto each other. And I've actually already done this step with this one, guys. I, I was started the blanket before I decided I wanted to do the tutorial. But you want to lay the two pieces of fabric on top of each other. And then um, what I do to make sure that they're the same size is I use my little fabric pins here. Um, and I just take pins like this, and if you guys can see that right here, I just take pins and I take the two edges of the fabric and I just stick the pin in, kind of weave it in and out a few times, and that holds my fabric together. And I just do that all the way around the fabric. Um, and then after I get it all pinned together, all I do is make sure that they are stuck tight together and not going anywhere, not going to wiggle, and then I just cut them out so they're the same size. So that step is really super easy. All right, and the next thing that we want to do is, is this is as far as I've gotten with this one, is we want to tape off the edges so that we know how far in we want to make our cuts. So when I'm making these blankets, I usually cut in two inches. So basically what I've done on this blanket here, if you can kind of see, I've just gone all the way around measuring two inches. And my blanket is actually um, pinned together still. If you can see that there, I have it pinned all the way around and that's just so the fabric stays tight while I'm working on cutting it because I want that fabric to um, not slip when I make the cuts. So what you're going to do is you're gonna take your root I mean, you could use a ruler or I use a measuring tape just because that's what I have handy. But I pull it out just a little past two inches, usually about three inches, and I lock it in place. So now I have my two inch mark there and I just take the fabric and I go all the way around and I measure two inches every so often. And before I actually put this big long line of tape, I just put a little piece of tape there. And I do that all the way around the blanket. So I have little pieces of tape, um, you know, probably every foot or so around the blanket, um, measuring in two inches the whole way around. And then when I have that all done, I just go ahead and I take my long piece of tape and I just spread it out across all the little pieces I already laid down so I have my two inch border measured all the way around. And that's as far as I've gotten. 
Um, once I'm done with that, I actually took my pins. I had them on the outside here, so I took my pins and I moved them all to the inside of my tape, so my fabric is still pinned together. But now it's on the inside, so I don't have to work around anything when I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts. So the cuts are the next step that we're going to do. And since I have my uh, blanket here and we're all ready, I think we can just get started with that. I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors here. And usually what I do is try to cut uh, about one inch pieces. So I'm going to start in from the corner a little bit just because um, I'm going to show you in a little bit what we're going to do with the corner. So I'm going to start, if you can see where my tape ends here, I'm just going to make a cut right there all the way into my tape going through both pieces of fabric. And you can see that's what I just did. I cut through both pieces right there at the end. And now I'm just going to go in about another inch-ish. I mean, as you can see, I'm not really measuring it. It's not super important to have it measured correctly. And I'm just going to keep doing that pretty much all the way around the blanket except for the corners, which I will show you in just a second. You're just going to make your cuts all the way to the tape. I'll do a few here for you guys so you can kind of see it is so simple once you have everything measured out. So, so as you can see here, I've got a few cuts going on. And, and before I do anything else, before I start my braiding process, I'm just going to make my cuts all the way around the blanket. Um, but because I want to show you guys the corners, um, and I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole blanket, I'll go ahead and do the corners right now. So you see I have this this pesky corner piece here and it's really not going to work right when we go to tie off our fabric so we're actually just going to get rid of it. I'm going to turn my blanket this way a little bit and I'm going to go onto my other corner here. I have, um, I've already made the cut this way. I'm going to make another cut going down in the other direction so I'm actually just going to cut, cut that um, corner square right off. There it goes. As you can see, I just cut it right off. It's gone. Now I just have a, like an empty square in the center here, and that's all I do. And that's not going to be a problem when we're going around and tying it off. You'll see that uh, we couldn't have tied it off if we kept the corner pieces in place, so we just cut them right off. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my blanket just doing exactly this. I'm going to cut my little one inch strips and remove my corners. And then when I'm done with that, then we can um, regather and keep going. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys. So I went ahead and I made my cuts all the way around my blanket, as you can see here. Um, so the next step that I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and set this back down here, is I'm just going to take off the tape because we actually don't need the tape anymore now that we made our cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and peel that tape off from all the way around the blanket. And the reason I feel comfortable doing this is because my fabric is still pinned together with my fabric pins. So I don't have to worry about it sliding. I've already made all the cuts I need, so I don't need to worry about any other measurements. So there is really nothing I need the tape for. I just need to make sure as I go along, you know, that um, I keep my fabric lined up. The fabric pins will do a pretty good job at holding it in place, but there is a little bit of slippage unless you put in a lot of pins. And I did not put in a ton of pins here, so I'm just going to want to be mindful of the fact that I'm making sure that my fabric is all uh, lined up here. So I have my blanket all cut up in, um, with all the tassels, and I have my tape off. And the next thing I'm going to do, I know I promised to show you guys um, both the weave and the braid method. Um, and because I'm actually going to do this blanket in the braid method, and it's a slightly different location of the cut than the, the weave method would be. It's not going to be quite the same, um, but I am going to show you the basics of how that works. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to do it on one of these little tassels, but it's really, really easy. Um, so I have my little tassel right here, and when I do the weave method, all I'm going to do 
is that I am going to tuck this under so I just see the edge there. If you see there's my, all my little tassels, I just have my my edge of my fabric there. And for the weave method, what I would do, and I'm not gonna make the cut in this location because that's not where the braid method cut goes, but I would just take my scissors, see where it's folded in there? I would just take, there we go. Take my scissors and I would put them right there where it's folded over and I would just make a little notch. Nothing too big, um, just uh, probably a, a notch about, you know, yay big, maybe a centimeter. Um, and, and when you unfold it again, then you're gonna have a notch right there. Because my braid method actually needs a knot in the middle, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it more in the middle. Um, and so you can kind of see uh, how that happens. So I have my, my fabric folded over here and I'm just gonna take this and just do just a little notch here. Now the notch needs to go through both pieces of fabric and as you can see there when I unfold it, it gets a little bit bigger which is why you don't wanna cut one too big. So I have my hole there and that's exactly what it would look like for the weave method except for your hole would just be up farther. And then for the weave method, what you're gonna do is take the bottom piece of your fabric first, take a little corner, and push it up through your hole. And pull that up through. So I have the bottom piece pulled up through the top piece. And then I'm gonna take the top piece again, I'm gonna find my hole in the bottom, and I'm just gonna push it up through there again. So they're basically just weaved together. You can do that as many times as you want. I'm, I'm only um, going to do it once to show you, but it just ends up making them be weaved together like that. And it's a really, really cool look. Um, I know it looks kind of weird on this one, but let me grab this blanket and show you something really cool. Not only does it look cool on the front side of the blanket, but it also looks really, really neat on the back because it creates like this edge um, that goes all the way around the fabric when you do that. And I just think that's really neat. So I really like that method. Um, but I just wanted to try something different for my other blanket with the same fabric. So that's what I'll show you next. Hey guys. So I went ahead and cut all of the holes and all of my tassels in my blanket. And then the next thing I actually did already was went ahead and braided uh, one side here. If you can kind of see, it's so cool. It's just a whole different way to do these tie blankets. And I brought it around the corner. You just kind of keep going around the corner and it just curves naturally. So you don't have to do anything special with the corners. And then I got to about this point right here. If you can see this tassel is, is where I left off. So that is where we are going to start. Um, so get closer here so I can show you guys. So if you can see this yellow tassel is where I left off with the braid right here. So this yellow tassel now is my top tassel and it really is on top so I don't know why the quotation marks. But um, the next thing I'm going to do is take this purple tassel which is actually the bottom tassel to this one that I'm holding right here. I'm going to take the purple tassel and I'm going to shove it through the bottom of my top tassel. So now that purple tassel is my top tassel. And now I'm gonna take the next door tassel, the top next door tassel, the neighbor tassel, and I'm going to shove it through the bottom of this purple tassel. So now this next door neighbor tassel is my top one. And now the one that's hanging open here is this bottom purple tassel. So now this is the one that I have to use and I'm going to go ahead and take it and I'm just going to shove it through the bottom of my top tassel. So now my dark pur purple tassel is my top tassel. And now I'm going to take my next door tassel, which is this one right here, and I'm going to shove it through the bottom of my top tassel. So if you keep just doing this down the blanket, then they just kind of weave together, they braid together, <clears throat> and that's what the holds the blanket together. And one of the things that helps me to remember this is I go along if I stop and I'm like, wait, which, which tassel am I at? Um, because I'm using different fabric on the back than I am on the front, I'm never going to be putting two of the same 
um, fabric tassels together. So my top tassel and my bottom tassel are always going to be the opposite fabric. So if you can see right here, my top tassel is my, my top um, butterfly fabric here. And my bottom tassel here is this dark dark purple tassel. So I just take my bottom tassel and I'm putting it through my top fabric tassel. And now my dark purple tassel is my top tassel. So then I go next door and I know that because I am holding this dark purple tassel, I cannot use the dark purple tassel again. I need to use the next door top fabric tassel. So I just take that um, next door tassel and I shove it through the bottom of my dark purple tassel. And now this is the top tassel. My top fabric, my butterfly fabric is the top tassel. So I know that the next tassel I have to grab cannot be that. It has to be the dark purple tassel. So I grab the next door dark purple and I just shove it through the hole. And it is really as simple as that, guys. Once you get all done, um, all the way around the blanket, you're going to have a tassel left. And what I would do is just go ahead and tie that off to one of the um, braided tassels next to it. And that way you do have an anchor on the blanket. But otherwise, um, this braiding process is sealing all of the fabric together. So uh, you don't have to worry about it unraveling or coming untied or anything, even if you wash it, which is really nice. And it just gives it a, a whole different look. The, the tighter that you pull the braids when you're braiding them through, you know, the tighter the look is going to be. But um, it's just a really fun, different way to do it. And some people find it more comfortable to use the blanket because they're not shoving tassels out of their face um, when they're using the blanket. Uh, some people being me. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this blanket. And then when I'm done, I will do one more video and show you guys how it turned out. Thanks. Hey guys. So I finished making my blanket and I really like how it turned out. The braided edges look pretty cool. Let's see if I can show you there what the, the full blanket kind of looks like. You can see these braided edges here. They look really great. Um, and like I said, it's just a cool different way to finish your, um, finish off your no tie blankets here so um feel free to try it yourself leave me comments questions let me know what you think i'm gonna have a bunch of blankets like this and like my weaved edge that i showed you earlier for sale in my etsy shop at www.etsy.com slash shop slash um enchanted imitations and uh, thanks for watching bye guys